my mother and I would take a bus and go to McKeesport for Armistice Day when the uh, World War I and Spanish-American War veterans would be parading in town. And I was so impressed with these men that came down the first time I ever saw them. And I told my mother, I says, someday I want to be one of those. Those were U.S. Marines. His imagination fully captured by the military lifestyle, Mitchell Page celebrated his 18th birthday by walking 200 miles to Baltimore to enlist in the Marine Corps. There, after a string of rapid promotions, the young platoon sergeant was sent to join the invasion of Guadalcanal, the first U.S. ground offensive of the war. The island's airfield was a critical military objective, for whoever held it had a base within striking distance of Australia, New Zealand, and the naval operations of both sides. All we had was just a couple miles of terrain to defend, but uh, we were taking a beating from land, sea, and air every day. And we had word that uh, uh, they were gonna attack on the 24th, 25th, 26th of October, an all-out attack with two regiments. They were in a position that could land thousands of troops right on the beach in front of Henderson Field if they had captured it. My orders from Major Connolly were Easy Company would be on the right, Fox Company on the left, and I was to protect Fox Company with my machine guns. So I took one squad of machine gun and I set them in place along this line and uh, uh, brought the rest of the platoon up. It was raining and I told them that they had to be as quiet as anything, no gear rattling, no nothing. It was up to us and Major Connolly's last order to me was, Mitch, you've got to hold this line. When they hit our line, it was so fast and it was so fierce that I, I took me 15 years to tell anybody what happened. It was something you couldn't describe, I couldn't describe it. Screaming and hollering, you know. The first thing you know, all my men were either hit or dead. So I'd run back and forth, I'd fire this gun, I'd fire that gun to let them think there were a lot of Marines before the next attack. I was just trying to hold my line and my platoon, trying to keep them alive if I could. And I saw this Japanese come up, and this guy's getting in position with a Nambu machine gun, and he got me dead in a doornail. And at that precise moment, I came back, and I couldn't go forward to pull the bolt handle back. And I felt a warmth between my chin and my Adam's apple. Who in the world would ever believe that? That fellow missed me 30 times. 30 times, 30 bullets went between my chin and my Adam's apple. I know they went there because I could feel a warmth. And the minute that last round went through, uh, I was just like this, tense as could be. And all of a sudden I went, <laughs> one burst and he was gone. And now it's getting a little lighter. So I stopped looking around, I didn't see anybody. Nothing was moving, nothing but just bodies everywhere. So I, uh, I don't know what possessed me to do it, but I, those two guys, those two machine gunners, I screamed over to them. I says, tell everybody over there to fix bayonets. I'm going over the hill. With two rifle companies stalled behind him and the majority of the Japanese force spread out ahead, Page threw two belts of ammunition over his shoulders, unclamped one of the Red Hawk 30 caliber machine guns from its footing and charged directly into the Japanese line. So I started down the hill and lo and behold, out of this kunai grass jumps up an officer and he had 17 or 18 men come up out of the grass, so I just sprayed that machine gun, you know, 1,300 rounds a minute, and I just cut the grass and the men and everybody down. All of a sudden, it was like I was in uh, another world. It was quiet as anything. I didn't hear anything, nothing. All I could hear, and all of a sudden, I saw these riflemen that I'd screamed to, here they come, like, like uh, kids down over the hill, fixed bandits and whooping it up and hollering it. We got him, we got him, we got him. <laughs> Major Conley came over and uh, he was patting me and hugging me and everything else, you know. And uh, uh, he, he just shaking his head, he says, I can't believe this night, I can't believe this night or something like that. I says, well, God was with us, Major. God was with us. 33 men fought 2,500 Japanese. And every time that I wear my medal, people ask me, 
where did I get it or how did I get it? I said, well, it belongs to 33 other men. And that's what I told General Vandegrift. When he put one around my neck on 21st of May, 1943, he said to me, you're the first enlisted man in my division to be awarded this medal. I can just see my mother right now standing there at our house. I remembered what my mother told me when I left six years and three months before with tears rolling down her cheeks. She says, son, all I want you to do is trust in God. Don't try to figure out everything by yourself and God will show you the way. That was exactly what I did.